We'll just go ahead, start with an opening statement, and then we'll go ahead and do some questions. Go ahead, Coach. All right. Well, uh, welcome, everybody. I think it's it's been a month since we last spoke, but uh, just excited to, to the, about our signing class and excited about the return missionaries that are joining us. And um, as we go through the, uh, the entire group, I mean, for me, it's more about the, the new guys that, that probably weren't on the list that we didn't get to talk about before. And that's uh, with uh, with Gary Bohannon as as a quarterback uh, joining us. Um, um, really excited about him. I think he brings a lot of competition to that quarterback position, which we need. And then also, uh, he has. Yeah, you know, I, I think I mentioned before the the one and dones was really it's really hard when we had that with um, with Keaton, but um, we we put a lot on Keaton to learn the offense as soon as possible and. and uh, I think this one's a little different because, uh, he, you know, Gary's really um, familiar with the offense. So a lot of the stuff is stuff that he already knows. He's worked with it, had, you know, thousands of reps with with certain plays that we run. They're very similar and makes a lot of similar checks. So I think uh, it's, a, it's a little bit different where he, from day one, knew a little bit more about the offense than, than your normal um, transfers. Uh, excited about adding also Naki. Uh, Tukoy and also um, Sefo Aquila uh, from Bay Area. Those guys are, are, are versatile, big time players. Uh, they can get after the quarterback. They can uh, play linebacker. They can grow into being DNs. I mean, they're, they're already big enough right now that I think then and talented right now that they can play for us right away. Uh, they'll be joining us in, in the Summer Bridge program, and and um, we're really really excited about adding those guys on defense. And I think uh, overall. 20 guys on defense, eight on offense, three on special teams. It's a good group. Um, obviously not not as um, – and 12 from the state of Utah, high school kids, and, and not a lot of uh, – as much um, with the transfer portal as we did in the past. Uh, last year, we we had a lot more in transfer portal trying to get the depth. Uh, it was important that we develop the depth, and and, and uh, we're in a really good spot right now. Uh, we feel with, with the uh, – talent that we're bringing in on the defensive side to compete for for starting spots and then uh the, the talent on the offensive side that we're retaining and that we're developing uh in addition with the guys that are coming back from missions we feel really good about that so look at the missionaries that are coming back the running back position having uh pokai haunga and and Travesa tamuni come back and i think that's going to be a really good good uh those two are gonna be really good for our position and um, with the running backs, uh, with Aiden leaving, uh, and then the compliment what we have with LJ and Miles and and uh, Hinkley, and then you're looking at um, the receivers that we have: Cody Hagan, Dominique uh, McKenzie. A lot of speed, um, a lot of. Uh, I mean, they, they can they can they can make big time plays for us. Uh, obviously, you've got to work through the mission legs, things like that. But they're joining a, a very talented and deep group of receiver, but. Uh, I think they can really bring some cool things for our t for our team and for Fessy and A Rod to use, and they bring a lot of speed. So uh, they'll find a place uh, on our, on their team and with our offense. And then you know, adding um, Dallin Javier D line, I think he's he's got a lot of ability can can grow. We, we've been able to project guys like this before in the past. I think he's going to be really good with his hand in the ground. Um, uh, you know, we got Sione Hingano at, at, at offensive line, the tackle from Chandler, return missionary. Gotcha. Well. It's been a minute. Um, like he's kind of cooled off even. And we have Nate Nate Hoke, uh, who's a, a legacy kid, back from his mission, and and uh, you know uh, Chris Hoke's son, and so he could play DN. He's a little different body type than his dad, but uh, he could play DN or outside backer or inside backer. He's got a lot of ability. Um, then um, let me see who my oh, then uh, Noah Moyaki, tons of talent, a great basketball player, really fluid with his with his hips and soft hands. And uh, legacy kid as well, with his dad being a former teammate of mine. But uh, that Moyaki name has been has been known to catch the ball really well and play the tight end really well. So he's going to do really good for us. We feel really good about the the group. And then there's going to be some other missionaries that we've got to figure out what the timing of them coming home from their missions and them extending uh, or coming back. What what the right time would be for them if if they join us uh, before the the summer or or. Uh, gray shirt and join us in January. Uh, there's also a number of PWOs that we got uh, some through the portal right now that are with us that are, we think are going to be really good for our team. And then uh, and we'll work their way into into scholarships. I think we've we've put a position where the competition will 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 get the best guys on on two deep. And when we get guys on two deep, 
we reward them with school with scholarships. Uh, an example of that is a guy like Joe Brown, who's a, an amazing player. So he trusted us, and and uh, we've made space for him. And uh, I'm glad that T.J. Woods and 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 uh, Aaron Roderick were, were able to uh, create a scholarship for him because he's going to be an amazing old lineman for us. And uh, that's just one that comes to mind right at the top of my head. I think the the rest of the group. I, I'm excited about the talent that we have here. Uh, I'm excited about the the uh, ability for us to bring young men in that we can develop, and and also guys that are ready to play right away. I think there's going to be quite a bit of uh, young freshmen and underclassmen that are going to be fighting for spots and going to have an opportunity to play uh, significant reps for us this fall. So uh, I'll take any questions you guys have. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. We'll go ahead and start with Jared Lloyd and then Mitch Harper. Juan, well, you touched on this at the beginning. Um, as far as the quarterback position goes, it's something I've wondered about. You know, you, you brought in a couple of uh, – young guys out of high school and Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall and both of them made it all the way to the pros kind of developed through the system the last couple of years you've kind of you know gone a little more toward bringing in you know transfers either JC or from you know from the portal is this a trend do you look at it more I know competition is important but kind of how do you view that position as you know that that's such a key position on the offense well I think for for us it's probably a, a year-to-year thing you know, when when you when you you, you mentioned Jaron and Zach, both of them left with another year left to play. You know, so um, when when you have guys that leave early uh, and and you're still developing guys, uh, I think it would be nice to say, okay, this guy's going to be the next, and so let's slate him in there. But if, if 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 through competition, you need to figure that out, and if it's not if it's not settled, then then we got to create create it more, and then at the same time trying to avoid the complacency and trying to avoid uh, guys that, that feel like they've already, they've already arrived. And so that's the, you just don't hand the keys over to somebody. You just, you got to earn it. And so in terms of the quarterback position, feel good with guys that are there. Uh, obviously we got to create opportunities for them to compete and show what they got and then make decisions. I mean, this is, we have a, a good group going into spring ball. There's going to be attrition guys. There's going to be guys that are going to leave. Guys are going to go that love football, that want to play. And so when you go through the competition, you start looking and being direct feedback and giving honest feedback to the players. Uh, there's going to be guys that, that are going to want to play and, and and they don't want to wait or guys that understand where they're they're at and can see, hey, if I develop and continue to go down this path, I, I'm going to be the, the the next in line as long as I keep doing everything right. That's that's but but even that person is going to have to have more competition. That's just, that's just the, the name of the game, especially at that position. And so um, that one will set the, 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 you know, the expectation of standard for everybody else. And that's kind of how we're going to operate. So there's going to be attrition. There's going to be some, some movement, some changes after spring ball, because we have really good young men that love the game of football and they want to get on there. So uh, the, the competition is going to be fierce and exciting. Kalani, uh, he signed in December, but we didn't get the chance to talk to you about him until because he signed. He made it public in January. Falatau Satuala, uh, what do you project with with him and and the the potential impact that he can provide as as a four star recruit coming in from Bountiful? Well, he he has such great instincts. He can play so many different positions, but we're going to start him off at safety first. We we need someone in the post with that instinct, with the instincts that he has. Um, and then, and then um, you know, we'll we, we kind of see how it goes. But he, he's got so much knowledge of the game. But the natural instincts that he has, I, I think he'll fit exactly what we want on the, on this defense. And we've we've had guys that you play in a certain position when you're young and whatever you grow into your body is what you end up at. But but uh, I know one thing is that he's a guy that, that's going to find his way on the field because he's got so many, so many unique uh, abilities that are natural to him. And uh, with Jay teaching him and and, and teaching him the defense, I, I feel really good about where he's going to be with us. Go ahead, Sean. I, I, Coach, I wanted to ask you about the new guys, the new signees that you're bringing in, and Naki and Seifu, who happen to be high school teammates. When you when you were just walk me through a little bit, kind of their recruitment, sort of what you see out of those guys, and when you have two guys that are coming out of the same high school. Uh, especially non-local, non-Utah products like that. Is there sort of a natural synergy or like symbiosis of, of kind of recruiting them together? Because I'm sure you're aware players talk and they, they talk about recruiting and that sort of thing. So do you kind of almost naturally pair them together a little bit? 
Yeah, I think it was important that 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 there's a that part of it, but then also to to treat them differently and separate. Uh, and it just so happens that they're they're great friends and really close. And but uh, when you recruit them, when Justin Anna and Jay Hill and the rest of the staff, Sione Paul has in that area. So when they recruit these kids, uh, it's important that they they give them a vision of where we see them and where we see them, per, uh, you know, performing for us right away. And that that they have unique skills, but they're different players, but they're very similar in, in a way where we can see them projecting to being big time players for us at, uh, on the outside, you know, rushing the quarterback, things like that. But uh, they they want to remind us that they can play offense too and things like that. But they're very versatile. They can play, and, and I like I like that they're they're ready to play right now. And so you know, it's, it's a it's a, our linebacker group has got tons of talent. We we added um, some really good talent there. But I mean, you look at guys like like Jack Kelly that can get after the quarterback. There's there's you know, you you want to the scheme is going to be key for it, but you need players that can get after the QB, and that's going to be the key. And 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 just make just be disruptive, make plays and. These guys come out of high school. I think they can do that right right away for us. Now, where they do it, it's it's a matter of of Jay and the rest of the staff and all of us trying to find the the best eleven and putting them at the on the field at different positions. And that includes guys like Falatau, um, Ephraim Asiata. All those guys are gonna gonna have a place for us. We just need to find a way to put them. And and I just like that. There's a bunch of there's not a lot of raw. There, there's great talent here, but there's a lot of ability. But but there's guys that can play right away as freshmen. Okay, we've got some more questions from Jared Lloyd and Mitch Harper. Go ahead, Jared. Connie, you talked about the challenge of scholarship versus walk-on. That's always a, a, an interesting balance. But now adding, you know, the last few years, adding the NIL stuff and those elements, how has that changed recruiting and, and how much impact does that have as you're, you know, trying to bring the right guys in for, for your program? Well, I think the key is for us to keep focusing on, on – um on the culture and, and not so much on, on money, but what makes money, you know, and, and, um, and then selling what, what we're about, which is BYU and the network and then allowing the players to see that they can be something, they can be a part of something way bigger than just football. And so uh, the staff, faculty, the entire, um, the entire visit for our, our recruits, they, they just, I think I think they just cover so many. It's unique and different. And I think I like the fact that we, you know, are looking at our, our our recruiting staff, our support staff, everyone involved has done a great job um, highlighting what BYU is all about. It doesn't fit everybody, but it it definitely fits the people that we recruited. And um, when they get here, they appreciate what we're all about, and 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 away we go. I mean, I, I think uh, in terms of of um, you know, overall fit, that's going to be, you, you, you've heard me say this before that we have to have guys can fit what we want for them. That That's in alignment with the mission of the church and with the university. And they have to happen, have, have to be able to play great football too. So uh, the fortunate part is there's a lot of guys out there that, that do that. And, and we signed a, you know, all these guys that we signed fit exactly what we're looking for. Kalani, how, how important is it for, your program now being a power league to pursue prospects who are sought after by many other power conference teams like Naki, who had a long list of offers. How critical is that to just get highly coveted prospects added to your program? Well, I mean, you have to, you have to be ready to get into some battles with recruit and recruiting. And, and, and I think sometimes uh, guys want to take, and, and this is, this is not, a, I mean, we want guys that want to be here. But sometimes you have to fight for those guys too. You have to you have to get in the recruiting battles, and you have to show them what this place, could, how this place could really help them, and 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 how they can become their best self when they're here at BYU. And and sometimes people will lean towards what's more difficult. Academics is harder here. We we it's very disciplined what we want, what we're trying to do here at BYU. But you do all those things, and you could be you could be guys like Fred Warner, and you can be like Andy Reid and Steve Young, and all these amazing alumni that have come through here. And you you get a, an unbelievable network of people surrounding you, and um, there's when you sell the the university the right way, which is what our coaches have done. Uh, I think you can get the right guys, and so we 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 know that we've had to make some improvements on the football field in a lot of different ways, um, and and part of that is is getting to recruiting battles and not being afraid of recruiting because uh, because the guy has a lot of offers and maybe may not 
may not be familiar with BYU, that's our job is is to get them familiar with BYU, understand where they where they're at, and it's, and and then and then you know not be intimidated by other recruiters. And and uh, Jay's been awesome at that, and 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 it's been it, it's been infectious to everybody else on the staff, and it's been really cool. So as we work through this together, I'm I'm excited that our our coaches are bought into just going after the best guys and and not not being shy on who they have to recruit against. And, and Kalani, it, since there's no other really hands up, I, I wanted to ask too, uh, how, how deep of a dive, maybe on the medical side, the background, did you have to go into with Gary Bohannon and his torn labrum and shoulder? Like how much extensive background did you and Roderick and this staff go into knowing the health of his shoulder coming into this one year? Yeah, we we I mean that that was a big part of it, and and the other part was just um, you know him understanding that that nothing's just going to be handed to him. Um, this is going to be a battle, and you got you got to you got to win the spot. That's that's just not going to. I don't know who's going to be a starting quarterback. I have no idea who that is right now. So, uh, it, all he cared about was an opportunity to compete. He's healthy. He you see the way he's built. And he's strong, and so. He, he wants to be a part of this team. He wants to be a part, part of the program. He not, didn't make any demands. Uh, and he's doing really well right now with the other quarterbacks, with Jake and the rest of the group. And I feel really good about the talent that's in that room right now. So, yeah, we've we, we factored all that stuff in, into play. And, I mean, that's – you look at look, look at the quarterbacks that have performed this year and done some really cool things. Not everybody was healthy when they, when they made their transfer. So, I think giving them another chance has kind of given them a different perspective on, on the game and – we won't take anything for granted. I, I think he's, you have a, a young man that's humble, that's ready to work and, and want to want to give to the team more than anything uh, that, that, that'll do well for our culture, and our program. Hey, uh, Kalani, um, 19 of the 31 on defense, as you mentioned, is that a reaction to the first year in the big 12 and what you need to do moving forward and getting tougher on the yeah, I think this. I think it, it it is, but it's also um, getting guys that, that. I think in the in the past we've taken guys, want to develop them. I think we have to have guys that are that are close close to being developed, to being game ready, uh, out of high school, and then we develop them to their their mature bodies, and then find the, the roles for them. But you have to have ability to get get going, and I think sometimes you can get into this this position of projecting too much rather than taking guys that can make plays right away. And that's, uh, I know what, when, when you watch the film and you look at what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do on defense, what Jay's trying to do on defense and with other coaches, it, it's, it's the, the staff on that side just knew that we needed to do some things differently. Um, and, and to add to the guys that, that are currently on the team, we feel really good about the talent that's there, but uh, you know, so sometimes some new blood coming in is going to be really good and spark competition and, so far, it's been really good, you know. So looking at what those coaches are doing on the defensive side, I'm excited at what we can accomplish when we get to spring ball. Go ahead, Jared. Kline, I just wanted to ask about the two new um, position coaches you brought in, what it's been like working with those guys as you've led up to signing day. Yeah, it's been amazing. I think, I think TJ uh, has done a great job with the O-line and just connecting with them. I think it just brings a, a different type of voice. And I'm glad that the administration allowed me the opportunity to go get a uh, coach like Coach Woods here. And and also the, the gave me an opportunity to, to go get a guy like Kevin Gilbride, you know. So when, when these guys are just – they just know how to do their job and do it really well, and they're connected to – they understand BYU. Uh, TJ's connected with all the all the uh, the, um, the veterans. I mean, I'm just I, – I, I don't want to put a lot of expectations and it's to everybody, but uh, – Caleb Etienne's never been better, you know, and and a lot of that was his connection to to TJ Woods and and Connor Pay, uh, Brain Kime, all these guys. Wayne Lapuaho. There's some great talent coming back that I know that they're embarrassed with the way the offense performed, but there's also some things that 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 I think TJ will bring to the table: the fundamentals, the technique, the stuff that will, and just the nastiness that I think he'll provide for our offensive line that we we've, we've been missing. So I think. It's going to be exciting for them to roll. I'm excited to see them uh, go against the, the, the D line, and then the perform. And and when you add, you know, amazing players and and like Joe Brown and others are going to be along. I mean, I know I'm forgetting some other guys. The, the, there's younger guys that are going to compete for spots too. So, 
They'll be really good there. And, and Kevin Gilbride's done a great job with, with the tight ends. Uh, I know that they, they see the film, they watch it, and they see that there's some some uh, some things that they could do differently that we can be so much more sound on the field and, and, and get us back to where, where we know we can get. And that's performing, scoring points, and getting us wins. I wanted to ask one more big picture question. There's been a lot of talk about the recruiting calendar, the coaching calendar through November, December, January, February, particularly with the upcoming college football playoff. Just what's your view on that, the the situation as it is now and what might need to change? Um, I, I don't know what the calendar is going to look like, but I know one thing. Um, I probably has been, I've, I've probably been more away from home than before in recruiting and, um, and that's okay with me. Like whatever, whatever we need to do to get our team right, that that's what we're going to do. And 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 I'm glad that uh, that there's an opportunity for us to go and recruit. And I mean, it's a little different with a, with the head coaches being able to go and meet with. Uh, I mean, it's a dead period now, but being able to meet with with high school juniors in January that was awesome. So uh, I'm excited about next year's class too. I think we got a good jump start on all of it. We had a great junior day. I mean, I think things are moving and whatever the NCAA or everybody else that's complaining about it, I all I know is you make you make this you make the rules and we'll follow them and then we'll just if you allow me to recruit I'm going to do it and if you allow head coaches to get out there and do stuff and we're going to hustle we're going to do that and but I, I I'm thankful that uh that our coaches you know Jay and Aaron and the rest of the group are committed to, to recruiting they they they've been working really really hard I think this is a, a proof of all of that and you're not even seeing some of the hard work you have to recruit preferred walk-ons too and then we're not allowed to announce them but we have some great talent coming in and preferred walk-ons you remember we've, we've done really well with those in the past and and that's when we've had kind of an attention to get guys like Tyler Algier and Dax Milne but now I mean the, the guys that are coming in are turning down scholarships at other places uh and they're they're coming here as preferred walk-ons with an opportunity because they want to be here and so uh, that 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 says a lot about those young men but also the coaches that are out there recruiting them. And so we're, we're, we're a much better team now, especially after today than we were in last year. And I'm looking forward to getting to spring ball. The off season is going really well. Added, added some new coaches and some new resources there. Uh, and, and they've done an amazing job. The guys are doing really, really nicely working out and, and uh, guys are getting bigger, stronger. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens when we put the pads on in March. Go ahead, Mitch. Kalani, you brought up some of the returning talent. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask you about some of the super seniors that have returned, being motivated by, by what happened last year. I know you got Pay, Batty, Bywater, Keanu Hill back. Any other COVID seniors that are coming back for next season? Uh, who else? Yeah, I think those are the main guys. Um, yeah, I, I think I think a, a big part of that was was um, you know. Like I said, getting get, making adjustments and getting some changes, and, uh, and Coach Woods was able to re retain quite a bit of those guys, especially at the O line. Um, and then, you know, Kevin's done a great job at connecting with the tight ends, but that's Arod has a good demand on that group. And then adding Keanu to that group is going to be good for us too. So there's a lot of loaded loaded positions and not a lot of spots, and you know where we're going to compete and see what what the best guys can do. Uh, I mean that's. We only know one way, and that's to play the best guys. That's that's what we're gonna do. Hmm? Yeah, kind, kind. Of well. Go ahead, Sean. Uh, Coach, just in case we don't get a chance to talk to you in the next couple of weeks and whatnot, can you give us a little bit of a tease or a sneak peek into into spring ball and kind of what you guys are working on heading into uh, spring practices? And I don't know if you finalized dates and whatnot by now as well. Maybe maybe you can tease that out as well, but. But just kind of give us a, a little bit of tease of between now and spring. Yeah, I think I think our, our I mean I I don't want to do everybody's job, you know. Brett Brett and Kenny need to do do some things too, so they're they're actually going to be able to get that information to you guys. But um, I, I think it's spring ball. It's going to be different because we're not going to have the stadiums not going to be available to us um, because they're redoing the surface and all that stuff. I don't know if I'm supposed to leak that out, but it's going to it's it's good good for us. But uh, the um, I know that we'll we'll, we'll uh, have some scrimmages and have some. I mean, it's 15 practices. We're going to use them all, and it's going to have to be physical. But uh, we also need to get 
uh, some throwing and some, uh, you know, get some some look at quarterbacks and receivers. Uh, and and, and our, our two deep may not be figured out by the time we get at the end of spring ball, but we, we should know who the, who the, uh, who the who the the guys will be that that'll make up that group, you know that, and where, whether they end up being the starter or or second string, uh, will depend maybe going into into fall camp. But there's some guys that I know that have done some really good things, like guys like Batty and others that that I think it's going to be really difficult to to take their seat. But I want people to try because then if there's a way that we can move people around, we'll, we'll get the best eleven on the field. So in terms of the other stuff with spring, I mean, I, I think uh, trying to give uh, our, our, our staff some uh, a little bit of a break after being working so hard, um, then we'll come back and get ready for spring ball. I think the first day spring ball will start uh, February 29th. Yeah. So, the uh, yeah. So, that, that, that'll be the first day, and I think we'll go throughout all of March, the 15 practices, but spread out, I want to say, three, three days a week we'll have those. So it will be a lot of fun, but but the guys are are really close, and there's some guys that are looking really really good right now in the workouts and, and the runs that we're seeing. Awesome, coach! I think that's all the questions for today. Thank you for your time. Thanks, guys.